Howdy folks, Sing and Toad here. Thank you very much for watching my video today and I hope you're having an absolutely miraculous day today. Before I get into today's video, I just want to give a couple quick shout outs to some channels that have uh, made uh, uh, reached a, uh, a milestone, if you will, uh, kind of their first milestone, their major milestone on, on their YouTube channels, uh, and that is the 500 subscriber mark. And both uh, Last Chance Knives and Sussex EDC, both these channels have recently got the 500 subscribers, and I just wanted to uh, to officially congratulate both of them for a job well done. You deserve it, and uh, cheers to you know your next milestone, which would be. Uh, you know, probably the 750 subscriber mark or maybe 1,000 subs. In either case, it's up, upwards and onwards. Keep going, both of you guys. You're doing great work. And uh, and if you're not, folks, if you're not already subscribed to both Last Chance Knives and Sussex EDC, I highly recommend you check these two channels out. Give them a sub. Help them out. I also want to give a shout out to one more channel that has a goal of getting to 500 subscribers before the year is out. And that is Terry's Knives and Man Stuff. Folks, Terry's putting out some awesome channel. He's a wholesome guy. He puts out great content. Uh, please go uh, check out his channel. Again, help him out. Give him a subscription. Sub to his channel. Uh, you won't regret it. Uh, very kind-hearted uh, individual. And, uh, and, and, you know, he's just trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of this year. And let's, let's, let's pull together as a community and get Terry to his goal. I would appreciate that help, folks. So, uh, so again, that was... Last Chance Knives, Sussex CDC, 500 subscribers, congratulations, and Terry's Knives and Man Stuff on the quest to get the 500 subs. Let's help them out. All right, guys, let's get on with today's video. All right, so what I have here today that I'm super excited to present is my very first Boker knife, and this is the Boker Bronco, and we're going to get into it uh, momentarily, but before I do so, I just want to quickly make mention that I did purchase this knife with my own money from Blades Canada. And uh, I forget what exactly I paid for it, but I will put it up on the screen here, what the price is uh, in U.S. currency. Um, and actually, you know what? Let me just check my notes. I did scratch it down here somewhere. Uh, $178.99. So $178.99 uh, Canadian dollars, uh, and I'll put the translation into, into American currency. Um, that's not the regular price of this knife. It was dramatically on sale. It was like a, it was like 100 bucks off. Um, so, you know, when I saw that, I was like, I'm, I'm going to snap that up right now. I'm not going to think twice about it. So anyway, we're going to get into it here, but this is a super awesome box. Uh, it's very, very large. So that's what this side looks like. So it says made in solid in Germany. And then we have, looks like their address. And then that is the official model number. So one, two, one, five, oh, eight. And then I guess us there and then the barcode. And then we have just... Um, I guess that's more uh, information there. That's the Boker USA, I guess. And then handmade. Uh, well, let me get that in frame here. Handmade since 1869. And then just a repeat. Oh, that's e EU. So is the code different? Wait, is the barcode different? Yeah, it's a different UPC. Check that out. So depending on whether this is in Europe or the US, uh, which I, I have this in neither because I'm here in Canada. But <laughs> anyway, that's neither here nor there. So let's go ahead and open up the box. And there we have it. Take a look at that. Isn't that a pretty presentation? Uh, it doesn't quite fit on camera on screen here, folks. You know, unfortunately my camera stands like right there. You can actually see the foot of it right there. So I'm bonking into it if I try to go too much that way. But uh, it is securely held down with these lashings. Now, they are a little loose because I have taken this knife out and had a quick look at it just to make sure everything was right with it before I decided to film it. Uh, there'd be no point doing a video if there was something wrong with it and I had to send it back. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get it out. So there's the knife itself. And of course you have the beautiful Boker logo with the little tree symbol and then Soligen underneath. And then on this side the big reveal CPM 3V which is the blade steel which is super awesome. That's a new blade steel to me. I don't currently own a knife in CPM 3V so this is going to be my first experience with that steel. But anyway let's just take a quick look what's inside the box. So you get some literature. So you have English and uh, I believe that is, well, Dutch, which I believe just means German. I might be wrong about that. 
and then this is just like your warranty information, instructions, and uh, if you guys care to read through this, you can just freeze frame. Let me move my fingers out of the way, and then just more warranty stuff there, and the little QR code and all that jazz. So, and then you just have the same thing, but in German. So, that's that. And then underneath here, if we can slide this out, there's a hidden compartment. And it reveals a sheath. And it is a dangler style sheath. And I can just get that to come out here. And so this is removable, so you can take this, uh, you know, you can have it with a button. Uh, you can take this off if you, if you don't care to have it, just carry it through the belt like so. It's got a little ferro, uh, ferro rod uh, holder here. Uh, or I guess you could put whatever you want in there screwdriver, you decide. It's got a drain hole. It doesn't say anywhere whether or not if it's made of genuine leather or not. Does it say something on the back of the class here? Oh, it says Spain. Spain. Say Wild Wilds? I can't quite make out what it says there, but it does say Spain, so I guess the the button at least is made in Spain, I suppose. Anyway, that's the sheath, and of course the knife is going to fit into the sheath, just like so. Now me personally, I'd probably go like this. And have it like that. So that way the button isn't rubbing against uh, the material here. That's probably the way I would, I would wear it. But it is nice that you have that. You can take it off if you don't want it. We're not here to look at the sheath, we're here to look at the knife. So, some of you might care about the sheath. I mean, to me, the sheath is just something that holds the knife. I'm more interested in what the knife is and what it does. But uh, this handle is very interesting. It's it's got an interesting feeling to it. It kind of feels like like the rubber of a car tire. It's very thin. It's got a very slim profile. It is contoured. It's a full tang knife. The tang is exposed at the end. There's a lanyard hole at the end here. Does have a 90 degree spine right there. So for scraping a ferro rod, this knife will have no trouble with that whatsoever. Saber grind. The sharpness out of the box isn't super fantastic. It's not dull, but it's not super fantastic sharp. So I will I will have to put my own edge on this knife. Uh, you know, it would be nice to see this thing coming out of the box with a, with a screaming sharp edge, but it's not it's 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 not a dull edge. I want to make that very clear. It's not a dull edge. It's just it's just not like hair popping razor sharp. You know, it's not sticky sharp. But that it's not like when you get a brand new Spyderco, a brand new buck knife that come out of the box with that hair popping like sticky sharp edge. This doesn't have that, but still sharp nevertheless. Well, let's just do some uh, quick size comparisons here. And somewhere on the screen, I'm going to put the specs up of, of you know all the all the specs and stuff for you here. But we're going to compare it against to start with the Spyderco Delica, and then the Buck 112 Ranger. Just give you a couple quick size comparisons there. And then I want to compare it against two other knives in my collection that this knife is going to, in my opinion, directly compete against. And the first one is the Gerber Gator. Actually, I should put the handles on the same. I'm going to try and just line up by kind of where the handles are. And the next one is the Mora Garberg. So, in my collection of knives, these are kind of the three knives that, you know, or the two other knives that it's going to directly compete against. Um, because the Gerber Gator has this rubberized handle, the Mora Garbrick has this kind of plastic type handle, you know, so the kind of that, you know, the, the artificial synthetic handle material, and they're both roughly the same size. I do have one other knife in my collection, which would be the Joker Ember. It would also compete, um, but... That's neither here nor there. But uh, anyway, that's... Now, obviously, there's a big price range difference. This knife is significantly more expensive than both of these knives. In fact, for the regular price of this knife, I could buy both of these knives 
no, uh, without any issue <laughs> for, for the cost of one knife here. But anyway, so just a couple quick size comparisons for you. Uh, so what are my final thoughts on this? Now, this is just a first impressions video, folks. You know, I have not had any time to take this out and, and do any work with it and really get a, a feel for it. What I can say is that CPM3V is a new blade steel to me. I am not familiar with the steel. What I do know is that it's a very tough steel. It does have really good edge uh, holding capabilities if it's heat treated correctly. I'm also not familiar with the brand Boker. I don't know how good they are with the way they make their steel, the way they do their heat treating, all the above. So this is going to be a knife that I'm going to have to take out, test, and then report back when I've had some time with it to give you a, a full uh, detailed review of what I think this knife is all about. Whether I think CPM3V is a good steel and Boker as a brand, all the above. But what I can tell you is that this thing is super comfortable in my hand. It's very lightweight, and uh, and I just love the feeling of it. You know, like it's just it it just feels like a good quick knife. You know, a good all around the camp knife, a good companion belt knife. So again, you know, as I mentioned before, Gerber Gator, Mora uh, Garber, Joker Ember, it's right in that same ballpark for just a good, you know, camp knife, camp companion belt knife. And that's kind of where I'm placing this guy. So anyway, what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you think it's an overpriced piece of junk? Do you think it's a sharpened crowbar? Do you think CPM3V is a is not worth the money? And this knife should have been made in 1095 or 14C28N and been half the money? You tell me, folks. I want to know about it. Please let me know down in the comments. I always enjoy engaging with you, and I always value your feedback. Take good care, my friends. This is Singing Toad signing out.